Joining us now is author of The Coming Collapse of China, Gordon Chang. Gordon, what is your reaction to China will move ahead to implement these sanctions on trade? You chuckle. You know, I think we'd be surprised if they said, no, we're not going to implement them. But, you know, we've, saw, we've seen the six previous sets of sanctions. China initially says it's going to do so. And, in fact, it does so for a couple months. And then when the international community changes its attention, they then go back to busting the sanctions. And that's what they did with the sixth set. They announced on February 18th they weren't going to buy any more coal. Well, they bought coal in February after the announcement, April, May, June. And now they're buying North Korean coal through third countries. So so, you know, we've got to take this with really a, a grain of salt. Well, and the, the U.N. sanctions did not crack down on the import of oil and refined petroleum products into North Korea from China. Is that one of the next steps in addition to secondary sanctions on financial institutions in China and other companies doing business with North Korea and helping support the missile and nuclear program? Yes, you know, the U.S. wanted that import ban on oil. Uh, Nikki Haley pushed very hard for it. China pushed back. So it's not in Resolution 2371. That's really going to be a problem because China supplies more than 90 percent of North Korea's requirements for crude oil, much of it on concessionary terms. That keeps the regime going. China supplies probably 100 percent of North Korea's aviation fuel, which is going to be critical if there is indeed a conflict. So, you know, Beijing has been supporting North Korea through thick and thin. And it's not just normal Commerce. It's also ballistic missile equipment, probably ballistic missile technology, semi processed fissile material. And as you point out, they've been money laundering for the North Koreans with the biggest Chinese banks. And the United States doesn't do anything. You know, in that op ed that you talked well, about. Well, let me, let me read, the, read this before you jump ahead on me there, Gordon. Sorry, yeah, there, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I want to get your reaction. So there's the Wall Street Journal editorial from Secretary of Defense James Mattis and Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. They write in part, North Korea now faces a choice. Take a new path toward peace, prosperity, and international acceptance, or continue further down the dead alley of belligerence, poverty, and isolation. The U.S. will aspire and work for the former and will remain vigilant against the latter. This coming North Korea reportedly asked several of its ambassadors to return to the country for a meeting. Again, what the, what the secretaries go into, they want denuclearization, no regime change, and they're willing to come back to the table with North Korea, that they're willing to talk to the country. And just your reaction, because your reaction in the break when you came out here was... Well, something. Well, you know, the, the, what you read was, we've heard that so many times before from so many different administrations. That's not new. The, what I found really distressing about the op-ed was they talk about strategic accountability, and then they don't mention all of what China's been doing, grossly irresponsible conduct, which we just talked about before. And if you're going to solve this, you've got to change, really, our policies, because all our previous policies have failed over the course of decades. So we've got to do something new. And there really was nothing new in this op-ed, which means that we're going to go through another period where we're going to talk about these things. We're not going to get anything done. That's really a tragedy for the American people. Do you think, though, so that, that that article or that op-ed is, is, is of a symbolic importance? I mean, it does have content we've seen before. At the same time, don't we have to say that before we move anything else forward? I mean, we have to say that, but I think what we're really going to do if we're going to move the ball forward is we're going to show both Pyongyang and Beijing that this time we're serious. We're going to go beyond words. What we need to show them is that we're not afraid of the Chinese anymore. We're certainly going to be robust in our responses. We haven't done that yet. Now, this administration is new, and so it's obviously trying to build the foundation for going forward, and I think it very well can do it. Yeah. But nonetheless, we've got to see it. Gordon, uh, Henry Kissinger on Saturday had an right. op-ed in the Wall Street Journal uh, where he suggested that a joint campaign between the U.S. and China of coordinated actions and statements would reflect uh, North Korea's isolation to the rulers in Pyongyang. And thus, when they realize yeah. their isolation, they would then give up their nuclear program. Do you think that's realistic? Well, I don't think so. And the reason is that China has weaponized North Korea with, for instance, as we talked about, ballistic missile technology. So what we really need to do is impose costs on China so that it has no choice but to work with us on North Korea. So what we need to do is say to the Chinese, look, you can support North Korea, you can do business with the United States, 
but you can't do both. If we do something like that, then what Henry Kissinger talks about is realistic. But the problem with that op-ed is he doesn't say, how is he going to get China to help us? And that's really the fault of there. But are, are, we, are we looking at a trade war, though? Because as, as we all know, trade wars often lead to real wars. Well, we've been in a trade war for decades. The Chinese have been waging it. We have pretended it doesn't exist. You know, for instance, today, President Trump is going to investigate the need for an investigation <laughs> on Chinese right. intellectual property. I thought any time you say you're putting together a panel <laughs> or we're going to do an investigation, it means that nothing will ever come of it. And, and we know that China, over the course of decades, but especially under Chinese rulers, Xi Jinping has become increasingly predatory, taking U.S. intellectual properties in new ways. So, for instance, all these new cybersecurity laws are intended to force companies to share their technology, in addition to all the other tactics they've been using before. We do not need another investigation, and we certainly don't need an investigation to see if we need an investigation, <laughs> which is what President Trump is going to is, do today. Isn't something we're overlooking here is actually the ramica ramifications for South Korea? I mean, one of the problems we have is that. Seoul is so close to North Korea, and, and I don't think if North Korea is going to do something, they're actually going to do it not to Guam, they're going to do it to South Korea, right? And, and I think the markets were reacting because South Korea is so important and pivotal in the global supply chain and logistics, right. especially for electronics that, you know, a lot of processing would happen, it would be thrown out of the system. Yeah, I mean, and certainly that is the inhibition for U.S. using force is because what the North Koreans can do to South Korea. You know, what we have seen, uh, and especially this whole issue of China's intention with regard to um, North Korea, is that, you know, they're not concerned about North Korean missile launches. They, they say they are, but what they really show their anger is, is South Korea trying to defend itself by employing the terminal high altitude area defense system, which is American built. And, and, you know, the THAAD system. And, and that really is an indication of Beijing's intention. So so we really need to move the Chinese, and it's not just for our benefit, but as you point out, South Korea, because South Korea is, what, ninth or 11th biggest economy in the world? Yeah, 11th, we often yeah. forget that. Mm. Do you feel like we're playing chess? They're playing chess and we're playing checkers? We're not even playing anything. I mean, this is, I, I don't want to get worked up, because I already am, but the point is, we have not used the elements of American power to protect the American people. And this has been over the course of decades, Republicans and Democrats, liberals and conservatives. Historians are going to look back on this period and say, why didn't American leaders protect the American people when they had the means to do so? And it's not just financial anymore, it's literally nuclear. Absolutely. Gordon, it was good to see you. Gordon Thanks, Shane. Jacob. Gordon's fired up this morning. <laughs>